हेलो माय डियर स्टूडियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज जिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर वन हंड्रेड एंड एट दैट इज द स्वेलिंग ऑफ द जॉ इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कवर द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द जॉ स्वेलिंग इपुलिस रेनलोमेटस इपुलिस माइलाइड इपुलिस ओडोटोम डेंटल सीज डेंटिगेरसिस ऑसियस ट्यूमर ऑस्टियोसर्कोम ऑफ द जॉ मेलिग्नेंट न्यूप्लाजम ऑफ द मैंडिबल अल्यूलर एप्सेस एंड एक्टिनोमाइकोसिस ऑल पॉइंट आर कवर इन दिस लेक्चर नाउ स्टार्ट विथ मी द स्वेलिंग ऑफ द जॉ क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द जॉ स्वेलिंग आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन फॉलोइंग कैटेगरीज दैट इज the arising from the mucoperiosteum that is the epulis there are five varieties of epulis one is the fibrous granulomatous myeloid sacromatous and carcinomatous second is arising from tooth germ that is the odontomes the different varieties are epithelium odontomes that is the arising from the epithelium elements that is the dental cyst dentigerous cyst and adamantinoma second is connective tissue odontomes arising from the connective tissue elements that is the fibrous odontome cementomes sarcomatous odontomes and these are the rare and third is from the co- composite odontome that is the arising from both epithelial and connective tissue elements this is these are the extremely rare that is the radicular odontome compound follicular odontome complex com- composite odontome and third is the osseous tumors any bone tumors can affect the jaw but there are a few bone tumors which occurs more often in the jaw there are we are discussing later in this lecture inflammatory groups alveolar abscess osteomyelitis of the jaw and actinomycosis all these are the classifications of the jaw swelling now the epulis the word epulis is an old term which means upon the gum so epulis is a swelling situated on the gum it arises from the alveolar margins of the jaw it can originate from the bone the peristeum or the mucous membrane the different varieties are as follows that is the fibrous epulis it is the most common of all the varieties of the epulis it arises from the peristeum at the neck of the of an incisors or premolar tooth as it grows it separates the teeth and ultimately loosens them the pathology behind this epulis is it is the fibroma and is composed of fusiform cells with many new blood vessels dear students here is the clear picture is showing the fibrous epulis is there this is the another image of the epulis is clearly seen over the gum now the clinical features of this epulis are it is a firm nodule at the junction of the gum and tooth it becomes polypoid in shape it is a slow growing tumor it is often seen in the relation to the incisor or premolar tooth it is not tender the adjacent teeth may be slightly separated and be loosened draining limb nodes are not enlarged now the complications of this epulis are it may undergo malignant change fibrosarcoma then it looks soft bluish red it grow rapidly and often bleed it may recur after excision if its root is not thoroughly excised now the treatment is the excision is the treatment of choice adjacent tooth or teeth of the, uh, and resection of a wedge of bone with its root must be performed to prevent recurrence now the granulomatous epulis it is often called false epulis as it is a mass of granulation tissue around a carious tooth or at the site of irritation by a denture a similar condition may be found temporarily during the pregnancy which is known as the gingivitis gravidarum now the clinical features of the granulomatous epulis are this mass looks bright red it is soft and firm in feel it easily bleeds on touch as it is a mass of granulation tissue it is often associated with the carious t- teeth so it is found in those who do not maintain oral hygiene offensive smell of mouth is often associated with this may be due to the infection of the epulis sometimes ill fitting denture may cause such swelling the draining lymph nodes may be enlarged and tender now the treatment excision of the carious uh, tooth associated with the swelling if ill fitting denture is the cause it should be replaced maintenance of oral hygiene the granulation tissue is scraped away and is examined histologically the mass of granulation tissue may be diathermized now the next point is the myeloid epulis that is the giant cell epulis it is an osteoclastoma and arises from the underlying bone 
Pathology is the microscopically the stroma consists of the fibrocellular tissues mal multinucleated giant cells as found in typical osteoclastoma are found scattered clinical features of myeloid epiphysis are although the underlying mass is firm due to the expansion of the marginal bone under the cover of the mucoperitoneum yet the gum covering it becomes hyperemic edematous and soft on touch soft to touch it is plum color due to the high vascularity it is always sessile it is more rapidly growing tumor than other varieties of epiphysis the adhering teeth are separated and loosened a x ray may be performed to show typical soap bubble appearance of osteoclastoma now the complication of this myeloid epiphysis are uh, ulceration serious hemorrhage treatment is if swelling is small the treatment is curettage and filling the cavity with calcium bone chips and if the tumor is large radical excision of the bone should be performed now the odontomes odontomes are the cyst or tumors arising from the epithelial or mesothelial elements from the tooth gems in the development of the tooth downwards extension of epithelium takes place which later form the enamel organ a cluster of this epithelium persists as epithelium debris from which the epithelium odontomes are formed epithelial odontomes are much commoner and Three varieties are commonly seen that is the dental cyst dentigerous cyst that is means follicular odontomes and uh, adamantinoma dear students you can watch this is the image of the dental cyst on your screen is clearly seen dental cyst that is the radicular cyst or periodontal cyst this is the most common of all the odontomes it is associated with chronically infected pulpless tooth now the pathogenesis the continued irritation of infection appears to stimulate the remaining nest of cells epithelial debris to proliferate the center of the mass becomes necrosed then liquefied and finally converted into a cyst pathology the dental cyst is lined by its squamous epithelium the contents may be fluid or semi solid containing cellular debris cholesterol crystals and foreign body giant cells the fluid is sterile unless secondary infection occurs if the infection remains active the epithelium is destroyed and the cyst is surrounded by a fibrous wall if the infection diminishes the epithelium wall persists and the cyst continues to grow and expanses of the surrounding structures and causes expansion of the alveolus now the clinical features of this dental cyst are this cyst can appear at any age but commonly seen in and around middle age it is more frequent in the upper jaw in this place if it is attains a large size it may enlarge the antrum and may rarely open into it it is always associated with a normally erupted tooth but chronically infected or caries tooth it is usually painless unless infected when it becomes painful when the bone is thinned out when there may be egg shell cracking If the bone is completely destroyed fluctuation may be present x-ray is helpful in diagnosis a circular radio translucent area will be seen in relation to the root of the affected tooth the margin of the cyst is sclerosed now the treatment of this dental cyst is pre and post operative dental hygiene must be maintained the affected caries tooth should be removed the cyst is approached intraorally the wholly epithelial lining is removed the cyst wall is curated and the soft tissue is pushed in the cyst is obliterated and the wound is sutures now the second uh, part of these odontomes are the dentigerous cyst that is the follicular odontomes or cyst this cyst is usually associated with non erupted permanent tooth the swelling consists of a cyst containing a tooth most commonly an upper or a lower third molar tooth lying obliquely in the cyst and visit fluid dear students here is a clear cut picture showing the dentigerous cyst on your screen now the next point of this lecture is the osseous tumors benign tumors malignant tumors of the maxilla and malignant tumors of the mandibles these are the osseous tumors of the jaw benign tumors are fibro osseous group pagus disease this may not be considered as a typical tumor osteoclastoma giant cell reparative granuloma malignant tumors of the maxilla are osteosarcoma columnar cell carcinoma of the maxilla and drum squamous cell carcinoma derived from epithelium overlying the hard palate tooth socket of or the gum invasion of the maxilla by sarcoma of the ethmoid burkitt's tumor malignant tumors of the mandible are the primary malignant neoplasm is extremely rare secondary malignant neoplasm may occur from carcinoma of the tongue floor of the mouth carcinoma of the lip metastatic involvement of the facial limb nodes which lie in juxtaposition of the mandible near the groove for the facial 
artery. Now the osteosarcoma of the jaw. Maxilla is more often affected, particularly the maxillary antrum, whose prognosis is the worst. The best prognosis is seen in lesion of the mandibular symphysis. Cases of the parasteal osteosarcoma has also been reported. It affects mostly the anterior aspects of the jaw, but the condition soon shows itself on the inferior or palatal surface. Pathology of the osteosarcoma of the jaw are the osteosarcoma is seen in the maxilla is mostly of rounded shell variety, only rarely it may be highly differentiated fibromyxochondrosarcoma. Clinical features are though any age and both sexes may be involved at women. Around 40 years are the common victim. Pain and swelling are the main complaint. Nasal obstruction and epiplora, abnormal outflow of tears down the cheeks due to the obstruction of the lacrimal duct occurs late in the disease. Treatment of this osteosarcoma of the jaw or radiotherapy followed by the surgery if required is the treatment of choice. High voltage radiotherapy is applied six weeks for six weeks. After conclusion of the radiotherapy, the growth is exposed and biopsies are taken from the various parts of the jaw. If any such biopsies shows malignant lesion, then excision of the maxilla is advised. Now, dear students, here the image on your screen is clearly shown the osteosarcoma of the jaw. Now, the next point of this lecture is the malignant neoplasms of the mandible. As there is a hardly any primary malignant neoplasm of the mandible, Mandible is sometimes directly involved from advanced cancer of the tongue, floor of the mouth, carcinoma of the lip and from metastatic facial lymph nodes. And treatment of the malignant neoplasm of the mandible are Surgery is the main treatment as radiotherapy causes the necrosis of the mandible. The growth is reflected along with a healthy portion of the mandible on both sides. Hemimandibulectomy may also be performed according to the extent of involvement of the mandible. The gap is made good by the prosthesis or bone graft. Now the next point of this lecture is the alveolar abscess. Alveolar abscess when occurs from the milk tooth can affect either jaw but when it occurs from permanent tooth usually the lower jaw is involved particularly the molar tooth. Pathology of this alveolar abscess are Alveolar abscess usually arises from acute pulpitis. Infected pulp exerts pressure through the root canal into the bony tissue around the apex of the tooth. Localized abscess forms. These abscess gradually points towards the outer surface with exception of the upper lateral excisor, incisor tooth, in which case of the abscess gives rise to the swelling on the palate and in case of the abscess in the, in the impacted third molar tooth which may burst through the medial wall of the alveolus. Now the complications of the alveolar abscess are if not treated properly, alveolar abscess will cause the osteomyelitis of the jaw. Alveolar abscess may burst and cause Ludwig's angina. Dear students, here is the image cle clearly shown the alveolar abscess. Now the clinical features of the alveolar abscess are alveolar abscess is most often seen during childhood and early adult life. Pain is the first symptom which is a dull or constant. Swelling of the cheek almost always follows pain. There is a redness and edema of the gum near the affected tooth. The regional lymph nodes become inflamed and tender. X-ray may show rarefaction around the apex of the affected tooth, but this takes time for resorption of bone to occur. Now the treatment of the alveolar abscess are, as soon as the diagnosis has been made, antibiotics should be started, like penicillin, erythromycin and cloxacin are quite effective in these cases, in this disease. Hot Intraoral irritations are also effective in giving the relief to the patient. Cold application may be used externally. Hot applications are usually avoided externally as they promote the abscess to point externally. This is the cosmetically not accepted by many patients. Once the abscess has been formed, drainage must be performed. It is usually done intraorally by incising the periosteum. When alveolar abscess develops from milk tooth, it may be extracted when alveolar abscess develops from permanent tooth. Proper dentistry is vital otherwise it may lead to osteomyelitis. Now, the last point of this lecture is the actinomycosis. This disease is caused by the actinomyces israeli and anaerobic gram-positive bra branching uh, filamentous organism. This organism occurs lives in as a harmless parasite in a tonsillar crypts and dental cavities of an otherwise normal mouth, normal co commensals of the mouth. If the organism invades tissue, it causes a subacute uh, pyogenic inflammation with considerable induration and sinus formation. Predisposing factors of this actinomycosis are the trauma, pres presence of the carious tooth, secondary bacterial invasion, 
and hypersensitivity are important predisposing factors in the development of lesions in the mouth. The student here is a good image showing the actinomyces of the jaw. This is the osteomyelitis of the jaw is clearly seen in this image. Now the pathology of the actinomycosis are in tissues the actinomycosis grows in the form of the yellow colonies which are easily seen in the pus by the naked eyes. This constitutes the well known sulfur granules or less known fish ray bodies. If one of these granules is crushed under the cover glass and examined unstained two elements can be distinguished branching mycelial filaments and club forms. The filaments constitute the greater parts of the body whereas the clubs are pear shaped bodies which form the fingers round the periphery of the colony. These clubs probably represent means of the defense against the protective forces of the tissues and are produced as deposition of lipid material derived from the host tissues. The filaments are gram positive whereas the clubs are gram negative. The characteristics radical arrangement is responsible for the familiar terms rape fungus. Now the spread of this actinomycosis through the spread by the lymph stream is practically unknown so the draining lymph nodes will never be enlarged. Spreading by blood stream is uncommon but a lesion may rupture into the vessels and give rise to metastasis in distant organs. The liver, the brain and the heart are the organs which may be involved. Only in rare cases the kidney, the spleen and the ovaries may be involved. Four main clinical forms of actinomycosis are seen. And these are the facio-cervical, ileocervical, uh, thoracic and hepatic. Facio-cervical is the commonest with about 60% occurrence followed by the ileocervical is 25%. Dear students, here is the end of our surgery lecture number 108 that is the swelling of this jaw. I tried to cover all these points in our short lecture. You can watch the another videos on YouTube to clear your concepts and you can also refer good textbook of surgeries to clear your concepts. And here is the end of our surgery lecture number 108 that is the swelling of the jaw. Thank you.